said on their website wasn't actually true. You see, these accounts were actually available to U.S. investors, as seen on a screenshot from their own app. Quote, FTX Earn Rewards are available for U.S. users on a promotional basis. And admittingly, this was confusing to a lot of people. A Redditor said FTX Earn for U.S. customers is incredible, but very poorly marketed, and then complains that it almost feels intentionally hidden, which should have been a red flag. Uh, and maybe it was, but it was there. And like it or not, if American investors put money into this earn account, we could earn 8% a year because of one of these influencers, they may have sold an unregistered security, which would be bad, not just for the person who put their money there, but also bad for the influencer. I mean, look, it's, it's all bad. It's just legal jujitsu to kind of get to the obvious. Ultimately, this story is about people getting hurt, promoters getting paid, and now they're getting sued for it, to which I say, good. Although, not everyone believes this particular legal strategy is going to hold water. I asked Legal Eagle, a well-known lawyer on YouTube, what he thought, and he was doubtful about its chances. And basically, the entire case rests on a part of the Florida law that the plaintiff's claim connects the endorsers to FTX. I'm very skeptical of this. The section in question extends liability to any director, officer, partner, or agent uh, for the seller if they personally participated or aided in the making of a sale. And if you're on YouTube uh, or if you're a celebrity endorser, you're not a director of the company, you're not an officer, you're not a partner, and you're not an agent. You're not able to act on behalf of the company. You're just basically contracted to make a statement. For most of them, it relies on a bare allegation that they were, quote, paid to endorse FTX. And then there is a subsequent allegation where <laughs> It's so wishy-washy. It says, quote, it is hard to imagine that anyone who has done business with FTX, including paid endorsers, would not have personally witnessed one or more of the deficiencies identified by Mr. Ray. He's the uh, guy who's in charge of the receivership of uh, FTX and bankruptcy. Uh, and all FTX endorsers have extensive business dealings beyond FTX and surely would be able to identify business practices that are unusually problematic. Now, as a legal matter, I don't think that that really changes anything. As a factual matter, it's just completely false that <laughs> a celebrity endorser or a YouTuber would have any insight into the inner workings of FTX that the public does not have. That's just not the way it works. Though at the same time, I wouldn't want to be these YouTubers either who are going to have to pay thousands and thousands of dollars to their lawyers to defend against what is quite possibly a meritless lawsuit. I don't expect this particular lawsuit to go anywhere, but I think it is going to be a pain in the sides of, of many of these YouTubers. Wow. So there's the official opinion from an expert. It'll probably cost the influencers a lot of money, but he's skeptical if it will hold up for the long run. Of course, we'll see how it plays out. But the last thing I wanted to do was not just ask a lawyer what they thought, but ask these influencers. Because look, whether you think this particular lawsuit is relevant, it changes nothing about the ethics of this situation. And
vicinity. Cooperation. The area. Thank you for your cooperation. and I wanted to hear it straight from them. And most of them refused to comment for understandable reasons, but me, Kevin, decided to respond, and here's what he said. You're being sued along with several others for the promotion of FTX. Do you think you should be liable? What are your thoughts? It, it's, it's terrible. I, I feel so terrible for the people who lost money uh, from FTX. I feel so, uh, just the entire YouTube finance community has really gotten hit basically with egg on the face, so to speak, because of uh, the association with somebody who ended up being a terrible fraud, and it's it's miserable. The way I compare it is, I was a real estate broker for quite a while, still am a real estate broker, and oftentimes clients ask us for vendor recommendations. Hey, who's a good electrician? Who's a good plumber? And I've had this before where 98% of the time the electrician you recommend is great, and then one time something goes wrong, and that stuff happens, and, and it turns into the situation where the person who's responsible is the person making the mistake. Uh, and I know it's terrible because it's like, hey, well, financial influencers, you know, what, how come they didn't know? Well, we didn't have access to financials at FTX. We had hired uh, individual representatives like uh, agencies, credit agencies who do this sort of stuff. Uh, and, and they tell us they do all the vetting for us. You know, this is why we hire people to help us. And, and so we don't have a look into the systems of what's really going on behind the scenes. And I think that's the same thing that happened to people like, you know, Shaq or Matt Damon or whomever else has been caught up in this. But I think the, the worst case uh, scenario out of all of this is the individuals who don't have access to their deposits. But do you think you should specifically, you or me, uh, Graham or anybody else like who promoted it, I think the difference is between you and Tom Brady is people kind of expect you guys to know. Do you think you should be, A, do you think you should be giving recommendations if you can't do the proper due diligence because as you said, you don't have access to these financials and then B, do you think that given that you guys profited, I'm guessing somewhere in the realm of a, a million dollars plus from these FTX things, uh, do you think that you should give back all of that money? 
So first, uh, my expectation is my profit from FTX, just to be as transparent as possible, is probably somewhere around 225K. It's supposed to be closer to 300, but they never paid me the last payment. So I'm probably somewhere right around 220. I need to fact check that, but we're close to somewhere around that. Stand clear. Uh, and, uh, and ultimately... Now arriving. Trap now leaving the station. Stand clear. 